Hello and welcome to North Star Stamper. I'm Sue Kramer. Today we're going to be talking about the Dove of Hope bundle that is in the mini catalog. And so that's the August through December 2020 catalog. Let me find myself on my tablet so we can chat. I think I've told you that's always my favorite part is visiting with people even if we are virtual. All right. Hello. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Alma. Um, I do post, if the videos go well, I do post them on YouTube. So sorry if uh, those of you watching either the replay or on YouTube and I don't get to interact with you. So maybe you can join me on a Facebook Live. It's so fun to chat. I feel like it's all family and there's my sister Anne. All right, we um, have a couple people. Let's get started. So um, these are the places I am on the internet. I hope you find me. You obviously found me either on Facebook or YouTube. Um, a couple things while, maybe we'll chat a little while people are joining us. We have a stamp sale coming on Wednesday and it's a 24 hour sale from midnight to 11.59. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and there's 15% off selected stamp sets from the annual catalog. I have a newsletter going out tomorrow if you are on my newsletter. So, um, let's get started. So, the Dove of Hope bundle is on page 13. And here's the stamp set, Dove of Hope. And the dies. I have some things already die cut and we're going to make one of these cards. And did you know that in the back of these catalogs there's like an index and they give you another sample let's make sure you can see it and they make it look more like a partridge I guess I don't know it's not a dove I wouldn't think that's a dove maybe a morning dove with the darker the browns and whatever so that's what we're working with today so sometimes it is really fun to create the cards that they have in the catalog. So that's what I've done for you today. Let's see if I can get rid of those comments. Um, Anne mentioned that my uh, camera was too low last week. How is the uh, setting today? I'm hoping it's better. So this is that first. Um, I have these two samples to show you and we're going to make this one tonight. So this is the first one and I'll just share with you the differences that I made um, if you are a demonstrator, you have access to what they call the sample recipes. So I went on to that recipe list and found out what they used to make this card. If you are not a demonstrator, um, contact me or your demonstrator. Um, if you ever want to know what products they used in one of the samples. I need a drink already. Um, the difference between this one and the one in the catalog are I made this a regular card size and they made it a note card. So I have a little more of the designer series paper than they do in the sample. Um, that is the festive, oh, I should have looked it up. The It's one of the Feels Like Frost design, specialty designer series paper. It was in last fall's um, mini catalog as well and they brought it back so that's just a piece of that and I stamped the dove from our dove stamp set on there um, one of the differences they used holiday bling on it I do not have that so what I did instead I used the dark real red blend um, you know our blends come um, in a two pack for the most part uh, a light and a dark and so this is the dark like I said I'm going to use the bullet point not the fine tip and just color my rhinestone to make them red and then I used my take your pick tool to put them onto the leaves that I had stamped in uh, shaded spruce and die cut um, then you use a blender pen which I have handy. So that it's just stamped in shaded spruce and then you use your blender pen to pull some of the color out of your stamped image to color the leaves. I didn't have the red braided twine, I think it was called. So that is a just a scrap of lovely lipstick, now expired, now retired, eighth inch ribbon. So there's our first card. Let me see. Oh, thank you, Anne, about the camera. Um, 
more people have joined us. Okay, so any questions on that one? All right, my next one is this one, Peace on Earth. <clears throat> I'm not sure why they made it the way they did. I copied it as best I could. Um, I'm not sure what shape they use for their Peace on Earth. And in the, they also have a little bit of directions and some, sometimes they'll tell you what technique they used. And they said that they used the marker on your stamp technique. Um, which you would take your stamp and then just write with, um, in this case, the colors were Pretty Peacock. So you would use your Pretty Peacock marker to color in peace. And then on Earth, you would use uh, Garden Green. But then they didn't tell you to have the markers. So they said they use the markering technique, but then they didn't have markers as a um, an item, a product that they used, which is fine because I don't have a pretty peacock marker. So what I did was I stamped Peace on Earth, the whole thing, in the peacock, and then I just, I stamped it on a separate piece of paper and cut out on Earth just with scissors. I don't know what they were thinking, but anyway, that's how I got the look from the catalog. Um, this globe came from the Memories and More pack. I didn't have the right size circle, so I just used the closest circle I had, but I think it looks fine. And we'll get rid of that scrap. I wanted to make sure I showed you. So for the greenery on the top and bottom here and the little berries, I put adhesive sheet on the back of my uh, garden green uh, cardstock and then die cut that out. For the berries, let me move that closer. If you can see, maybe if I turn it a little bit, you might be able to see a little see it. They said they use shimmer paint on this card. So by looking at the berries on in my catalog, I used let me grab it. Our shimmer paint in frost white. And I shook it up and I opened it up and then I used one of my water painters. And I just took it from the lid and painted it on, do I have it here? I do. Painted it on a scrap of pool party. And then I let that dry for quite a while because it was pretty wet. You can see it's um, warped. So I let that dry and then I die cut out the berries to do that. In hindsight, I wish I had not used the adhesive sheet. I would have preferred just a glue dot under those. That would have been easier. Or again, you could use a rhinestone and color them red or whatever color you want using a blend. So that is that. I'm putting things to the side as I go through them. All right, that's the white. Um, what else? On this card, I don't know if you can tell, I did emboss the um, vellum, like they said to, with, it's called Subtle. And it is very subtle. I wish I had used something a little more vibrant. When I'm using vellum in um, a card like this, sorry, I should see if there's any more questions. All right, good. To do this card, I started with the vellum and I just laid it on my card without adhering it. And then I adhered all my pieces. So the greens and the berries all had adhesive on the back of them. The circle, after I die cut it, I just used my regular adhesive and put it on top of the vellum. And then I added these pieces. And then I turned the vellum over, and then I knew exactly where I could put adhesive to adhere it to my card front. So I just have regular adhesive behind the globe, and then I have three glue dots on the back side of the greenery so that you can't see the adhesive through the vellum. So that's kind of my trick, using vellum and hiding the adhesive, since um, Stampin' Up! does not carry vellum adhesive. So that's that card. Any questions on that one? I think that's pretty. So when I don't have um, ideas, but I know I want to use a stamp set, I just start with the catalog. And um, I'm pointing out the things that I don't have in the catalog and, I de you know, um, some options for you to use. Um, should we make a card next or do you want to see all my samples? What do you think? I think maybe we'll make a card. So I'm going to make this card. And again... Much to my husband's surprise, I don't have everything in the catalogs, so I'm going to have to make do with a couple things. They said to use the rectangle dies on there. 
uh, for this sentiment and I don't have the rectangle dies but I do have the ornate dies and there is there just so happens to be a an, uh, rectangle die in the ornate dies so I think well I'm gonna need that handy and then we're gonna take our the only stamping on here is our sentiment and I had a block so I'm gonna pick that up and I have mint macarons. It, it suddenly is dark at 7.30, so when I'm standing up, I'm casting shadow. So I will sit down again when I um, get busy here. All right. Um, I need a sturdy surface. Let's see if a paper pumpkin box will do. I think it will. So um, I'm going to put this this way so you know what this is the card we're gonna make now can you see that okay I'm gonna put this sideways I'm going to use my um, bossing buddy sorry we don't carry them anymore if enough people ask for them maybe we'll get them back but I've been told that sometimes they'll take stuff off and bring them back like an adhesive remover we don't have an adhesive remover right now either and I'm going to stamp this as straight as I can, kind of in the middle. Looks good. I can see it tone on tone. And I have my embossing powder in just a cheap... I didn't think I had white embossing powder, but I was happy that I found it. I actually have a whole other container. So I'm going to pull some down here. Use my little scoop. Good. Make sure I close this up because our my heat tool could send that flying. All right, embossing. One of the first things. Sorry for the noise. I will try to talk over it. Let's see if you can watch this melt. It's like magic. So I try to start at one end and then go slowly down. Hopefully you saw that melt that's kind of fun more impressive with the gold and all or the um, m metallic let me get my box out of the way all right so you can see this die is quite a bit bigger than i want it to be and that i think they have it closer to the edges there so we are going to double die cut i'm pretty sure i've showed you this before and I'll just show you where I'm going to put this. So I'm going to put this... Oh, that was dry. Sorry, I need to see upright. Okay. So I'm putting this end where I want it on there. And I'm going to use a piece of washi tape. And then I'm going to run this through my die cut machine. Maybe. There we go. <laughs> No, Anne, I don't have everything. I still only buy things I like and things that I think I'll use, uh, which is why I get rid of very few things. Okay, so this side has more cardstock on it than I would want. Let's see if I can get this off. It doesn't want to come out. There we go. That's pretty good. And now I'm going to place it again. Here, let me get it set up and then I'll show you how I have it. So I only want that much. I don't know if you can see. Well, you can kind of see where the edge is, I think. And I'm going to make sure it's lined up, which it's not quite. So there, on the back side... And then I'm just going to run the machine over this edge. Okay. I don't know if you can see. I might. So I'm only going to, where I know I've caught that edge that I need to cut because I want the stitching on both ends. There we go. It bent a little bit, but. So there's our die, our die cut. 
and clean this up a little bit and show you how much shorter it is. So I double die cut it. And I'm just going to toss that to the side and get this machine out of the way. And it does fold up, so it's nice that it um, doesn't take up as much space, but I've got a lot of stuff on my table. So I have a lot to show you. Okay, so back to our card. Pull all this over. Bear with me for a minute. All right, so let's start with the card base, or do the card base next. Sorry if it gets wonky when I put that on there. Okay, card base. And then you can see there's a second rectangle. Um, what would you say? Maybe three quarters of an inch less than... We'll start with that. So three, it's, let's see, four and a quarter. Let's try an inch less. So that'd be three and three quarters, or half an inch, I mean. So five and a half, half an inch is five. Let's see. Let me my bone folder. Mm, I think I do want it smaller. Let's cut another quarter inch off two sides. So a quarter off there. Because they don't give us the dimensions of the cards or pieces. Let's see, that's better. All right. And then I th couldn't figure out what they did, but then they said that they sponged. So I have my Pretty Peacock ink and a sponge. And so we're going to do that. Let me get my other pieces out of the way. And I know I have it here somewhere. Right next to me. Okay. And I have a piece of scrap to go under here. I think I'm distracted or something. So I'm going to, I just ink up my sponge and just sponge. I don't like that. We're going to dab it. Nope, that doesn't work either. They also use um, snowflake sequins on this card, which I don't have. So I have a couple other ideas. I don't know if I like that. You know what? There's two sides to the cardstock. Let's turn it over and see if I like my... Streaky. Maybe it's because my sponge is so big. And it'll be covered by the dub a little bit. And as you know, some of you know, most of you know, I had a birthday last week. Thank you for all the cards and well wishes. It's really fun having a, I call it a Facebook birthday. Got lots of, um, comments and messages on Facebook. And then I have all the homemade cards that you sent me that I will show you at the end of my video today. Um, so thank you for those. It was really fun. I saved all but one to open on my birthday. So there's our piece. Like I said, I don't have the snowflake stars um, sequence. Snowflake uh, They're in the mini catalog, but I don't have them. Um, but I do have these. These are the metallic enamel shapes, but I have another idea. I'm going to use, if I didn't put it too far away, I'm going to use our um, paint. The frost white, is it actually paint? I don't know. We're going to put some on this block. And then I'm going to splatter it onto the card. I think we'll just try... Yeah, this, this one should work. So I'm going to put some on here. Hopefully you can see I'm just taking it from the lid. 
then I'm going to add water. Ooh, that's a lot of water. That'll work. Put the lid on there so I don't spill it. And if you can see, it's pretty wet. And then... So there's some of our stars. Do we want a really starry night? All right, that's good. I'm gonna clean this off just on a paper towel. Clean that up. While that dries, we'll talk about the dyes. There's that piece and that. I think I'm done with this. All right, I already die cut. If I can find them again. The pieces. And I just looked at the picture. I saw that they used the dove. They used the body and the tail piece. Where did that go? And then they have two sets of wings, both the detailed and the solid piece. And then I saw that they used uh, old olives, so I die cut that with this little piece here. So I think I've used all... Oh, the only one I haven't die I have not used is the ornament, but I have I did use the stamp which I on a card and I'll show you that when I'm done with this one. Okay, so here are our pieces. Let me get my adhesive. I think we'll just use glue dots and some dimensionals. And I'm sorry for my reach. I use my take your pick tool almost every time I craft anymore. It's kind of interesting. All right, so we are going to put this layer on first. Which side? Oh, there we go. Oh, this is so strong, I tear the paper quite often, and I don't know. There we go. I will just put more adhesive on there. And it's on the back side, you'll never know. All right. See, it wasn't quite dry, it smeared a little bit. And then this is gonna go down there. Oh. And then we'll use glue dots to put our dove together. So what they did was they have this one going this way. So I'm just gonna put a glue dot This one, they have kind of going the other direction, so kind of line it up so I know where I'm going. The other thing you can do is pick up the glue dot with the piece. Alright, and we can use, let's use a little dimensional, a mini dimensional to put this on his body, his, her body, there, and use a glue dot on the front of this one, because it's going to tuck behind the body. Just looking at the picture in the catalog to figure out where this goes. I think they have it uh, tucked in a little more. Like that. And then one more glue dot for the twig, or is it an olive branch? My guess is I'm going to put it on the front because we're going to tuck it behind his mouth, a beak. So it looks like he's holding that in his beak. And I think I need another glue dot under the detailed wing. It's moving on me. There we go. All right, I'm gonna put a glue dot on the back of this tailpiece and then put that on the card 
I did this on the sample I, other sample I made with this. So I'm going to hold it like this so I know where it's going to go. And it's going to go about there and push it down and that's all the only thing that had the adhesive on it. And I'm going to put a bunch of adhesive on the back of this. Do we want it popped up? Let me look at the picture closely. I think we do. So we're going to put a whole bunch of dimensionals. I'm gonna oh whoops, I'm gonna overlap where things are overlapping. And there we go. Let's see. You know I can't talk and take these off at the same time. Oh, so I mentioned my birthday. So those of you that have ordered from me, thank you. I am going to get your uh, thank you gifts out this week. Hopefully tomorrow. Thank you, thank you for your orders. And if you order on Wednesday for our um, stamp set sale, those thank you gifts will go out next week. Let's put this on some dimensionals as well. And I think our card is done. Oh no, we have stars. And if you remember, I didn't. I, we're going to use those other stars. Or I have just some uh, clear. Put that off there. Let's get put everything back in my bucket. So these are left over from a paper pumpkin. I think it was the March weather together or something like that. We could just do some circles because our splatter were circles. And I have a couple of have these. We'll put a couple of these on as well. This was a very easy uh, bundle to work with. I just had lots of ideas and I just kept creating. And then I, like I said, I just kind of hit a block and I'm like, oh, I'll just make what's in the catalog. So there's our card. Pretty close. It's really fun to see things in person that are in the catalog. All right, so those are um, those three. I don't have that designer series paper and I kind of ran out of time. So there are those. And my other samples for this bundle. I remembered that I already had the brightly gleaming specialty designer series paper. And that's another one that was in last fall's and they brought it back this fall. And so I found a sketch and this is one of my ideas to create um, the dove on this one. It's kind of a watercolor and I'll show you the difference. Let me get that box back. Where did the box go? So I will stamp him. And I have, um, what color is this? Smoky Slate. I believe I used Night and Navy in that one. So I'll show you what he looks like just stamped. Or to get a watercolor look, you ink it up. I'm going to move these out of the way because I don't want to get them wet. And I'll move my ink. This is just a spritzer. And I have a W on the lid, so I know it's just water and not alcohol. I'll bring this back so you can see the difference. It works really well on watercolor paper. But if you let that dry, um, it's kind of a mess right now, but once it's dry, there's the difference. So this is just stamped, and this is spritzed and then stamped. It just washes it out a little bit. Clean this up. All right, so that was what I did on that dove. And those are just um, designer series paper from the Brightly Gleaming. And I that pretty peacock is such a pretty color, no pun intended. <laughs> um, and so this is also from that pack. Um, I This is the designer series paper, and then I used copper embossing. That is from the in Invitation stamp set. I can't remember the name of it. This one I die cut, and then I don't know if you can see on the dove, I spritzed it with um, some of that shimmer white 
in a spritzer with rubbing alcohol and I let it dry probably overnight so that the, it would adhere. I see it. Oh, there. I did use the um, Peace Joy Love. Oh, I do have a piece somewhere on the bottom to adhere to the inside there. So there's another card. I have two more with this stamp set and this is a gatefold. Um, I use the ornate. I can't remember what die I used for the rectangle. And then I embossed it. And then I... Lots of die cuts on that one, actually, aren't there? And then the dove is embossed with the gold. And it's a gatefold card. And my last one is with, just with the ornaments and the branch. Um, I believe I did use a marker to color in the different parts of the branch. And then I would... Um, Remarker it before I stamped and then I used a wink of Stella to color those in I believe And that is embossed And that is on thick whisper white. So those are my ideas with the Dove of Hope bundle Lots of fun I thought there were more but anyway, so on To how are we doing on time? Okay, we'll make this quick I want to share with you the birthday cards I received. This was a shaker card from my sister, Anne, who was also a demonstrator. And then she stamped on the inside as well. So there's sequins in there with designer series paper. And this is embossed. Very pretty. And this one is from my friend Paula. I know she sometimes watches my replay. That's this... Um, Flowers for every season and the jar punch. This is embossed too. I don't think the embossing shows up very well on video or photos. This one is from Stephen Alma. A lot of colors in that one. Very pretty Alma. Thank you. The peacock. We have lots of peacocks. And this one is from my friend Becky. That's the peony garden. They're pretty. The colors are very pretty. And this one is from my friend Deb. Another demon. Actually, they're almost all demonstrators. That's the um, Gilded Autumn Designer Series paper. This one is embossed. The copper and then the leaves. I can't remember what those leaves are called. This one is from Melissa. She's also on my team. And this is one of the stamp sets I will not be getting rid of. It's the music one that was Don Olszewski's Million Dollar Sales. And my husband thought that was one stamp, Melissa. And I'm like, no, you get the lines and then you have to add the notes yourself. So, okay, two, three more. Um, this was from my upline, Kristen Bryant. She put a note inside and left it blank so I can reuse it. And this is the... Um, Flowers for every season. This is from my friend Teresa. And look at those peonies. Isn't that beautiful? The peony, I forget what it's called. Per, yeah, I don't know. The dies. A lot of die cutting there. And the ribbon, everything. I love that everything coordinates. You know, the green and she happened to have the green paper that matched the ribbon that matched the designer series paper. So thank you for that, Teresa. And then this one you probably saw before, but I made it. And my husband came home on my birthday and he said, I was going to go buy you a card, but I didn't think you'd be happy if I bought one. So I came down to my stash, found one, a card that I liked, and I gave it to them. And then they all signed it for me. So I get to keep my own card, which is kind of fun. All right. Let's see. Melissa has a comment here. Oh, the, the notes. Melissa thinks the notes on her card play happy birthday. We have a piano or a keyboard across on the other side of the room. Melissa, I will try it and let you know if it does. It, I think it might be close. I'm not going to try to sing, but lots of cards today. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Thank you for the orders. Your thank you, your birthday thank yous um, will be going out in the mail soon. Thank you for joining me. Happy stamping. Check out our sale. On Wednesday, there will be a special tab on the website for you to order just the, um, to see a list of all the sale stamp sets. So that's what I've got for you today. Thank you for joining me. Happy stamping. Take care.